Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, we will be solving questions of engineering mathematics, which were asked in GATE 2011 paper of uh, aerospace engineering. As we can see in this slide, there were total eight questions asked um, in this paper, out of which five were uh, asked for one mark and uh, three questions were asked for two marks. So let's try to solve these questions one by one. Yeah, starting with the first question. Um, this question is from the vector calculus. Consider X, Y, Z to be right-handed Cartesian coordinates. A vector function is defined by coordinate system, defined in a coordinate system as V is equal to 3xi plus 3xyj minus yz square k, where i, j, k are the unit vectors along x, y, and z direction, respectively. And they are asking us the curl of v is given by, and four options are given. So um, they are asking us the curl of vector v. So um, what is curl? Curl is a cross product with the uh, del operator. So we can say curl of V is equal to del cross P and that is equal to I J K do by do X do by do Y do by do Z and uh, here three X 3xy minus yz square will come. And then if you take a determinant of it, we'll end up with differentiation of yz minus yz square with respect to y is minus z square. So it's minus z square minus zero times i because differentiation of 3xy with respect to z is zero. That's why I have written here zero minus j times zero minus zero because differentiation of this term with respect to x and this term with respect to y, z is zero. Hence, I have written zero, zero plus k times differentiation of this term with respect to x, which is three y and differentiation of this term with respect to y is zero. So it's three y minus zero. So ultimately we'll end up with a minus z square i plus three y Okay, looking into the option, um, we can clearly say option D is correct in this case. Okay, coming towards the um, next question. This question is um, a basic question regarding type of function. So here, which they're asking which of the following function is periodic, okay? What is periodic function? The function which repeats its, uh, repeats the value after certain interval or certain period of time, okay? So if you look into this uh, functions, let's say for example, f of x is equal to x square. As you go on increasing the value of x from one, two, three, so on, x square value will also go on increasing. So this you cannot say as a periodic function. Similarly, if you see option C, which is e to the power x, this also like, as you increase the power of e, what will happen? e to the power one, e to the power two, e to the power three, so on, will go on increasing the value. Okay, so this is also incorrect. Same is applicable for log of x. In log of x, as you change the value of x, your log x will change and it will not repeat. Hence, the option A, B, C are wrong. What about the constant function? A constant function is like satisfying the condition of um, periodicity. Means periodic function is that which will repeat its value. And here, um, constant function is always repeating its value. Means for, let's say, um, for a very infinitesimally small 
interval we can say um, a value is repeating itself in this case so constant function is a periodic function because in this case we are getting the same value of function uh, after any interval of time okay so that's why we can say in this case the option d is correct coming towards next question this question is from the maxima and minima topic of calculus here uh, they are asking us uh, the function which is in terms of three variables x1 y1 and sorry x1 x2 and x3 this function has a minimum value at okay so um, f of x1 comma x2 comma x3 is equal to x1 square x2 square x3 square minus 2x1 minus 4x2 minus 6x3 plus 14 this is a given data and we have to find at which point we will get the minimum value so you have to differentiate this function with respect to x1 with respect to x2 and with respect to x3 so if you do it you will get three different equations and then you have to equate it to zero in order to get the points okay so differentiating with respect to x1 is 2 times x1 minus 2 equal to 0. This implies x1 equal to 1. With respect to x2 is 2 times x2 minus 4 equal to 0. This implies x2 is equal to 2. Differentiating with respect to x3 uh, is 2x3 minus 6 and then we'll equate it to 0. Hence, we'll get x3 is equal to 3. What we are doing, we are individually um, differentiating with respect to x1, x2, and x3. Whenever we are differentiating with one independent variable, we are considering other independent variables as constant. Okay. So from this, we can clearly get a point 1, 2, comma 3. And looking into the option, we can say that option A is correct in this case. Coming towards the next question, this um, this question is um, again um, let's say uh, from the maxima and minima, uh, but they are uh, uh, it is related to um, uh, vector calculus. Let's see how uh, they have given one function which is. Um, made up of a two variables x1 and x2 um, so f of f of um, x1 comma x2 is equal to x1 square plus 2x2 square plus we will write it as e to the power minus x1 into e to the power minus x2 like this we'll write okay the vector pointing in the direction of maximum increase of the function. Okay, at a point one comma minus one is the maximum increase of the function f is given by gradient of that function. Okay, so if you take a gradient of this function, okay. Um, so let's say a gradient of f is how much? 2x1. Mm, then here minus differentiation of e to the power minus x1 is minus e to the power minus x1. e to the power minus x2 is as it is times i plus 4 times x2 minus e to the power minus x1 is as it is differentiation of e to the power minus x2 is e to the power minus x2 into minus 1 so that is why i have written minus here so this is the gradient so this will give us the direction of the um, increase of the function and if we calculate this gradient at a point 1 comma minus 1 what will happen 2 times 1 is 2 minus 
e to the power um, minus one into e to the power minus minus is plus one times i plus four times minus one minus e to the power minus one into e to the power plus one. So this is will get cancelled. You'll end up with one. Two minus one is one times i plus minus four times minus one times j, which is minus five j. So it's a one i minus five j. So you can say it's a one five one minus five vectors. Okay. And looking into the option, we can clearly say option B is correct in this case. Okay. Coming towards uh, the next question. Yeah, this question is from the linear algebra. Uh, here they have given us two simultaneous equations. First one is a y is equal to pi plus x. We can write it as y minus x equal to pi. Second equation is y is equal to x minus pi. We can write it as y minus x is equal to minus pi. Okay, um, so if you try to write it down in terms of uh, the um, matrix, it will so look something like this. Like we'll write in the form of ax equal to b. So it will look like as um, one minus one. Um, yeah. Uh, then one minus one times y x equal to pi minus pi. So this matrix is A matrix. This matrix is B matrix, and this is a variable matrix x. So this is a non-homogeneous um, system of equations. Okay, ax equal to b. Okay, and in this case, what we do, we have to do a check that is uh, rank of a b if it is equal to rank of a or rank of a b is not equal to rank of a. If first case is there, then only we'll have in we'll have a consistency. If it is not the case, then we'll say it as inconsistent. Okay. And if it is inconsistent, then it will have no solution. And if it is consistent, then this rank is, let's say, is equal to number of unknowns. Or if it is not equal to number of unknowns, on that basis, we'll say whether it will have unique solution or infinite many solution. OK? So let's try to solve this question with the help of this chart. So I'll prepare an augmented matrix AB, one minus one, one minus one, pi minus pi. So um, if you try to convert this into the equal on form, we'll perform the operation R2 is equal to R2 minus R1. What will happen? First row will remain as it is. Second row will this will become zero. This will also become zero. This will become pi, and this will become minus two pi. So now we can clearly see here rank of this matrix is A. Rank of A is one, whereas the rank of AB is how much? It is two. Hence, it is not equal, and we can clearly say this is an inconsistent and has no solution. Okay, so. We can clearly say here option C is correct in this case. Okay. Coming towards next question. This question is from the um, uh, numerical methods uh, based on the Newton Raphson iteration formula. So they have given one function f of x, which is equal to x minus sine of x. And they are asking us to find the Newton-Raphson iteration formula for the root of the function. Okay, 
So f of x is this. If you look into the Newton Raphson formula, it is given by xn or let's say in terms of k, it is xk plus one is equal to x xk minus f of xk divided by f dash of xk. Okay. So um, this is the generalized Newton Raphson formula. If you try to implement it here, um, we should know f dash of x, which is one minus cos of x. So looking into the given um, iteration formula, uh, how it will look like xk plus one is equal to xk minus x minus, or let's call it as xk minus sine of xk. Okay, divided by one plus cos of xk. On further simplification, it will become xk plus xk cos of xk minus xk minus minus plus sine of xk divided by divided by one plus cos of xk divided by one plus cos of xk. Yeah, uh, sorry, here it's a negative. Yeah, and now we can clearly see this xk will get canceled and we can write it as sine of xk minus xk cos of xk divided by one plus cos of xk. Looking into the option, um, in denominator we have one minus. Um, so looking into the option, um, we can say that uh, option A is correct in this case, okay? Sine of xk minus xk times cos of xk divided by one minus cos of xk, yeah. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. We just have to calculate the differentiation of the given function and put it into the formula. So for this, uh, newton raps integration formula should be known. Coming towards the next question, um, this uh, question is from eigenvalues and eigenvectors topic under the linear algebra. Here they have given a matrix two, A, B, and two where a and b are the real numbers. The two eigenvalues of the matrix are lambda one and lambda two and are real and distinct only when the a and b values are, okay. So basically we have to, um, uh, they have given us that the two eigenvalues are real and distinct. Considering this, you have to tell um, about the values of a and b. So let's try to solve it. We know eigenvalues are can be calculated by using a minus lambda I determinant equal to zero. So for this question, it will be two minus lambda a b two minus lambda determinant equal to zero. So it is two minus lambda whole square minus a b equal to zero. It will be four plus lambda square minus four lambda minus a b equal to zero. So it is lambda square minus four lambda and here plus uh, four minus a b equal to zero. Okay, this is the uh, characteristics equation. The root of this characteristics equation is how much? Lambda will be equal to minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus four a c which is 16 minus four times a is one, c is four minus a b divided by two a, okay? So on further simplifying this, we'll get four plus or minus under root of 16 minus 16 plus four a b. 
divided by two. So the 16, 16 will get cancelled. This two will go, this two will cancel with this four. So we'll end up with two plus or minus under root of AB. Okay. They have given that the roots are real and distinct. If they are distinct, it means neither A or B has to be equal to zero. Okay. So option D is per wrong because if it is zero, then you will have a identical eigenvalues, but that is not the case. If both, if one value is negative, if other is positive, what will happen? You will get a complex root. So that is also incorrect because they have given it's a real roots. So one is greater than zero and another one is less than zero options are wrong. So option A and option B in this case is wrong. So only correct option is option C because if both are negative, negative, negative will become positive in multiplication and hence your and the root of that positive value is again positive. So you'll end up with two real and distinct values. Okay, eigenvalues. Hence, the option C is correct in this case. Okay, coming towards um, the last question from this uh, paper. So uh, this question is from the uh, differential equation. The solution of this differential equation with an initial condition is given by. So we can use the variable separable method here dy divided by y cube equal to e to the power t into t square dt. <clears throat> so if you take a integration on both the sides, you will end up with, so this is, I can write it as y raised to the power minus three dy. So it's a y raised to the power minus two divided by minus two, okay? Is equal to here integration by parts, t square i as it is, integration of e to the power t is e to the power t minus integration of differentiation of t square is 2t, integration of e to the power t is e to the power t. So here minus one upon two y square equal to t square e to the power t minus, again integration by parts, 2t as it is, integration of e to the power t is e to the power t minus e to the power uh, 2t differentiation is 2 e to the power t integration is e to the power t and again one more time again it's a e to the power t okay and this minus minus will become plus so we'll write it as plus c okay so um, this is the generalized equation but they have given us y of 0 equal to 1 so when you put the value of t equal to 0 the value of y is 1. So if you put into this equation, it is minus 1 by 2. This will become 0. This will also become 0. It is equal to 2 times e to the power 1 is 1. e to the power 0 is 1. So it's a 2 plus c. And this implies c is equal to minus 1 by 2 minus 2. So it is minus five by two okay so we got the value of c and we'll now put it into this equation so how much it will be um, minus one by two y square okay is equal to t square e to the power t minus two t to the power t yes what was the next term plus 2e to the power t minus 5 by 2. Okay, minus 5 by 2. So this is the overall value of the function. And what they are asking us, they are asking us um, y equal to. So we have to calculate the value of y in this case. 
So uh, we can take this y on the right hand side and the rest of the stuff on the left hand side. So it will be first of all um, yeah. So um, if you multiply this overall whole equation with uh, minus two and this side also with a minus two what will happen this will get cancelled minus minus will also get cancelled so we can directly write as a y square equal to one divided by so here this um, two two will get cancelled and this two will get multiplied inside so overall i will write here as minus 2t square e to the power t plus 40 e to the power t plus 4 e to the power t minus 5 no minus minus will become plus 5 so now uh, y i can write it as under root of 1 divided by here phi I will take it on the left hand side and out of all the terms we can take 2e to the power t outside. So inside the bracket we'll end up with a t square minus 2t sorry here it will be negative 40 4e to the power t so it will be it will be here plus 2 okay and uh, yeah so this is the final answer comparing with the options we can clearly say here option d is correct in this case because it's one divided by five minus two e to the power t and only difference here is plus and minus okay and we can see here we have taken two e to the power minus t outside okay so first term is will remain positive second will become um, the negative and third will become positive okay so that's why option d is correct in this case so that's all we have uh, from this uh, 2011 paper thank you all for watching this video bye